Good evening and welcome to the 2017 Civic Recognition Awards. Uh, this is an amazing ceremony every two years and uh, I am Les Pearson Councillor responsible for civic functions. It makes me proud every time I'm here. We're here this evening to pay tribute to four individuals that have made outstanding contributions to our community. The dedication and commitment of these individuals and the groups they volunteer with is what makes Medicine Hat a wonderful, caring place to live. The Civic Recognitions Award began in 1979. The City of Medicine Hat biannually recognizes individuals who have made an excellent and extraordinary contribution to the community and have enhanced the quality of life in Medicine Hat and in the areas of community inclusion, community service, culture, environment, humanitarianism, sports and recreation. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating the 2017 Civic Recognition Award recipients. For culture, Arnie Hadley. For environmental, John Slater. For humanitarianism, Gerald Friedman. And for community service, Stan Sakamoto. Let us now pay tribute to the great country we live in. Please stand and join us in either listening or singing, O Canada. Thank you, you may be seated. I'd like to pay tribute uh, to the special people who are here tonight as well. Uh, please stand and acknowledge the fact that you're here. Our MP, Glenn Motts. <laughs> Drew Barnes was going to be here. I'm not sure if his representative is here or not. Maybe not. Uh, and we have regrets from our MLA uh, from Medicine Hat, Bob Warner. And it's a pleasure for me to welcome fellow councillor members who are here tonight. Uh, first of all, Selena Simmons, my good friend, yes, my good friend Julie Friesen, and Selena Simmons. We're going to see her a little later, and of course our mayor is here as well, and, and myself. I now ask Mayor Ted Clugston to come to the podium to offer greetings on behalf of the City Council and the community of Medicine Hat. Ted? Well, welcome everybody. It is such an honor and a privilege for me to be here tonight. Uh, I was going to introduce our guest, our guest, but you've already done that, so thank you so much. I also really want to offer a very special welcome to our 2000 Civic Recognition Award winners who are here on the stage tonight. Congratulations to you all. What constitutes a Civic Recognition Award winner? It's leadership, it's volunteerism, it's devotion and creativity. It is many things in one package, but the greatest quality is attitude. It is the attitude of giving back to your community and making someone else's life better just for knowing you. And isn't this what we all really want to do is leave this country, this uh, province and, and our own community better than we found it. And every one of these individuals here tonight has done that. 
His Civic Recognition Award winner is all of you here on the stage tonight, and also many of you in this room. Your age, skills, or your background doesn't matter. An award winner embodies a drive to discover, build, grow, work together, and produce results to make our community and our city a better place for us all. This year's award winners, the people on stage tonight, bring innovation, change and growth and a sense of pride to our community. These are four extraordinary individuals who my fel fellow city council members and I feel represent and symbolize much of what is good in Medicine Hat. And this is actually what makes me, when I go to these events, is what makes me so proud to be the mayor of this wonderful city with the people we have and the volunteers we have and, and our civic leaders that we have here. These recipients have all played a role in making our community safer, stronger, healthier, cleaner, and more empathetic. We honor those accomplishments tonight and the strides you have taken to make Medicine Hat a community of choice. Imagine if we could have a hundred more individuals like this, how much better this community would be if we could clone just one, all four of these individuals and have all the work that they've done in this community reproduced over and over and over again. You go above and beyond what is expected or required. Your attitude and your willingness to be the change we want to see in the world continues to enhance the quality of life in Medicine Hat. And for that, we thank you. We congratulate you on behalf of City Council. Congratulations. We truly live in a caring and compassionate community. Uh, I'm the uh, volunteer coordinator for the Alberta Summer Special uh, Olympics here in Medicine Hat. And uh, we set out to, to recruit 500 volunteers and we've ended up with 800. It's just an example of the kinds of things that happen in our community. It's amazing. As most of you are aware, there are criteria established by City Council that must be met to nominate someone who is deserving of these awards. Nomination for the Civic Recognition Awards require a completed application form, a letter of support from a nominator, and a brief biography of the nominee. Nominees may be residents of Medicine Hat, Redcliffe or Cypress County, as long as their contribution benefits the community of Medicine Hat. And awards may be made posthumously, it's something to consider. A representative from each of the city's community advisory boards, the Social Development Advisory Board, the Advisory Board on Disability Issues, the Youth Advisory Board, Senior Citizens Advisory Board, Heritage Resources Committee, Arts and Heritage Advisory Board, and Urban Environment and Recreation Board were designated uh, to, to make the selection of the, uh, the special candidates that we have here tonight. To re they reviewed each of the applications and made a recommendation to City Council in each of the categories. The Selection Committee and City Council can choose not to award in a category if they believe there isn't a nominee that meets the criteria. Please note that there were no nominees in the Sports and Recreation or the Community Inclusion category for 217, and that's just really too bad because there are definitely individuals out there who deserve that recognition. Something to think about for the next two years. Thank you to this year's selection committee for taking time to make this event possible. As council's representative, I get to sit in on their deliberations and believe me, it was an interesting conversation. Uh, can I ask each of you to stand and be acknowledged, remain standing so we can acknowledge all of you at the end. These are the selection committee members. Jane Halliday from the Urban Environment and Recreation Advisory Board. Uh, Anita Pinder from the Arts and Heritage Advisory Board. Kyler Picard from the Social Development Advisory Board, Sterling Hinch, the Advisory Board on Disability Issues, Kiara Lego, Youth Advisory Board, Rod Sommerfeld from the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, Patrick O'Brien from the Heritage Resources Committee. Thank you to all these members. I'd like to now begin by introducing the nominators for the categories. As I call the first nominator's name, I ask them to come to the stage as I begin to uh, read out the criteria for their award categories. Please remain on the stage until after your nominee's speech. So first we have culture. The cultural award uh, and the nominator is Wes Bell. Please come forward. Wes will introduce the recipient for tonight's 217 cultural award, Arnie Handley. 
Our cultural award criteria for nominations include an amateur or professional in visual or performing artistic competition who has competed in a professional, national, or international championship and who has placed first, second, or third in that competition or for an individual who has made a major commitment to cultural development in a volunteer or professional capacity and has displayed an extraordinary amount of dedication in their commitment to this development. Wes? Thank you, Mayor Clugston and Councillor Pearson. Good evening, everyone. When I asked Arnie, what drives you to volunteer and contribute so much to our community over all these years? Arnie's humble response was, in society, you put in when you can and take out when you have to. It was my turn. Well, Arnie's turn to volunteer has lasted over 45 years, and it continues. In preparing my application for his non nomination in the cultural category, I was again struck by the chronicle of his unrelenting commitment to our community's cultural development. Backed by the support of two other local artists and cultural activists, Aaron Nelson and Jim Marshall, I enthusiastically put forward Arnie Hanley's name for nomination. A resident of Medicine Hat for 60 years, a teacher and librarian, one of the very early visionaries and believers in the opportunities that laid in the rubble at the derelict Medelta Pottery site, Arnie was a director of the Friends of the Medelta Society throughout the 1980s, a volunteer position. Through his and several others' insights and determination, Medelta has risen to become one of the premier pottery and ceramic arts and museum centers in North America, as well as an important economic driver through tourism. As a working artist, Arnie has brought his practical experience and knowledge to the table as a juror for the Alberta Foundation of the Arts, director of the Alberta Crafts Council, organizer of ceramic workshops locally and across North America, Director of the Medicine Hat Ceramic Symposium, a summer arts program co co coordinator, while passionately reinforcing the importance of arts and heritage in our community. His contributions as an early member of the Historic Historical Resources Commission has helped preserve our city's history for generations to come. He is also an active member of the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. As a current chair of the Public Art Committee, his belief in the significance of accessible art and its value continues uninterrupted. For his years of dedication and his extraordinary contributions to the far-reaching arts and cultural betterment of the City of Medicine Hat and our residents, he is the ultimate recipient of the 2017 Civic Recognition Cultural Award. Your recognition is well deserved. Congratulations, Arnie. Thank you very much, Wes. We'll ask the Mayor Clugston to come forward and uh, make the presentation to Arnie. Don't sit down, Arnie. You have a chance to respond to these wonderful accolades. I'm leading the way, you guys, making all the mistakes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Wes. Um, Mr. Mayor and uh, Councillor, uh, I feel like a bit of an outlier here in that I'm aware and have been aware of the contributions of the other people that are on the stage, and um, trust me, they deserve it a hell of a lot more than I do. Um, thank you to the City of Medicine Hat for being allowed to grow up here and knowing some of these people over that length of time. Medicine Hat was a fine place to grow up. Medicine Hat was a fine place to, to teach and to be active in. Thank you to Gen, Nisa, and Sumi. Thank you. Congratulations, 
Arnie, don't sell the selection committee short. Uh, there were multiple nominations in this category, and you were the one that, that was chosen. You've made a major contribution. Thank you. The next award is for our envir environmental uh, award, and I ask the nominator, Martha Montskew, to come forward, Mother Earth, as, as she's affectionately known. Martha will introduce tonight's recipient for the 2017 Environmental Award, John Slater. The criterion for our Environmental Award nominations include an individual who has made a major contribution towards the preservation, restoration, or enhancement of our natural environment which has contributed to an increased quality of life in Medicine Hat. Martha. Thank you, Les, and Mayor. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to present John Slater for the Environmental Civic Recognition Award. I first met John when he, we were both encouraging active transportation through the addition of bike lanes on streets and bike racks on bi buses. Since then, we have worked on many projects together to enhance the city and to encourage citizens to get outdoors and enjoy the pr and, to pr and to protect our natural spaces. John volunteers whenever he can to encourage projects that protect nature and inform citizens. He also enjoys the field trips and outdoor activities just for the fun of being outside with nature and good people. John Slater was born in Victoria, BC, lived in Sydney, attended UBC, graduating with a bachelor's and doctorate degrees in mechanical engineering. He was employed by Defence Research and Development Canada in Halifax, Nova Scotia for 14 years uh, before he transferred, uh, transferred to CFB Suffield where he worked 22 years. John retired in October 2005 after 36 with DRC, DRDC and since then we have been the benefit of his energies. John joined Grasslands Naturalist in the late 1990s, just enjoying the field trips and general meeting presentations. Upon retirement from his work and since 2006, he has been an active participant in executive and committee work for the organization, volunteering wherever his skills were needed. He has served many years in executive positions as treasurer, president, past president. He has been a member or chaired of several of the working committees, including the Issues Committee, the Budget Committee, the Governance Committee, the Medicine Hat Interpretive Program Operations Committee, and the Field Trip Committee. He is also a frequent volunteer for the various public events at the Nature Centre at Police Point Park. John has moved forward many projects that protect nature. With his leadership, grasslands naturalists have picked thousands of baby breath plants before they spread their seeds further. Truckloads of bags stuffed tightly with baby's breath from Ranchlands Nature Reserve have been hauled to the dump. He has also encouraged others to participate with him in wrapping hundreds of trees to prevent beaver damage so it is less likely that beavers will be killed for their eager deeds. Each year, John has also led Grasslands Natural's participation in spring cleanup and the Great Canadian Shoreline cleanup. Like the beavers, John is keen to notice new and half-finished projects into which to sink his teeth. <laughs> if you go to the website of Grasslands Naturalist, you will find a new birding trails guide for Southeast Alberta and, the, and a draft of a soon-to-be-released wildflower brochure. John has been the engine behind the completion of these two ambitious projects. We have spent hundreds of hours looking at wildflower pictures. Another intriguing project caught his attention last year when the interpretive program obtained a grant to do a riparian health assessment of the shores of the river that flows through Medicine Hat. John was out there with his GPS and a team of volunteers to assess the riparian health of our river. John takes on responsibilities with cheerful goodwill and completes them with skill and thoroughness. He is always willing to be the servant leader and go the second mile. Through his active participation in committees and outdoor activities, he not only helps with the organizational improvements, but also leads by example. 
Under John's leadership, both the interpretive program at the Nature Center and the Society of Grasslands Naturalists have achieved stability and have embarked on many exciting projects. He has also encouraged the involvement of many other volunteers. For his active participation and steady and cheerful leadership and support for projects that protect the environment and inform citizens, I am proud to present John Slater to be honored by the city with the Environmental Civic Award. Thank you so much, Martha. Your worship is going to make the presentation. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Martha. Um, I, I owe so much to you. Uh, she's been my mentor in this uh, activities in the Grassland Naturalist. She mentioned about the wildflower uh, brochure that we're working on. She planted the seed and it just happened. Ha I was able to water some of that. And we've, uh, along with Kathy Lenowski at the college, uh, we were putting together this brochure and it'll soon be on the website. So when you go outdoors for a walk on the trails, you might say, well, what are these flowers? You'd be able to look on uh, uh, the website and there'll be pictures. Uh, our member, Dwayne Myers, uh, who you see many pictures in the newspaper, uh, he has put together all the pictures for this project. Uh, that's just one example of some of our activities. Uh, also, there's also, a, if you look out your window, you'll see a bird. Uh, we have a birding trails uh, uh, brochure and a guide, which will soon be printed uh, by the Canadian Badlands Association. Um, so, uh, I may be receiving this, but it's really a, a group award because I can't do it without people like Martha, uh, our president, uh, Hugh Armstrong, and many others that are here tonight. Uh, I really um, acknowledge their participation. Um, another activity we have going now by uh, Dave McKenzie is butterflies so, and dragonflies and bumblebees. So if you happen to see these and are having interest, uh, check with Dave. Um, I'd, I'd like to also thank my family. Um, as you know, any volunteer with a family provides, they provides a support and enthusiasm and also tolerance for providing me with the time that I spend with the Grassland Naturalist. So I'd like to thank my wife, Bev, and my granddaughter, Angela. I appreciate their uh, continued support and encouragement. Also, I'd like to thank the city. The uh, city has been a, a, a great uh, provider for many things. Uh, I'm chair of the operations committee uh, for the interpretive program, and it's really we owe the benefits to the city, to the parks department, uh, for their financial support, but also their uh, ongoing uh, suggestions. Uh, so um, we're very grateful to the mayor and to uh, the councillors and to the different departments. Um, I'd also like to say uh, my thanks to our uh, group. Um, the Grassland Naturalist has about 140 members, so if you're not a member yet, please join up. Sign up. Um, we have a great board of directors with Hugh Armstrong. Uh, we have various committees. We have field trips, as Martha's mentioned, to get out. Uh, I'm very fortunate with various people that have helped me learn along the way. Uh, Rob Gardner, Phil Horsch, um, Milt Spitzer, uh, Bob Fru, um, and so many others. Um, uh, we also have a great treasurer, Eileen Cowton, that has been with the organization right from the beginning, 1985. So we, we enjoy that. So uh, on behalf of the Grassland Naturalists, I would certainly appreciate the city's program. Uh, Coraline Gardner runs a great program down at the Nature Center. So if you haven't been there, please go. Uh, school kids, uh, families, uh, and just individuals. I know the, the mayor enjoys walks through the park. And um, we're going to see great transformations down there happening soon. So I mustn't steal that thunder from somebody else's, but uh, it's coming up. So thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, receiving this award. And as I say, really, it's on behalf of the whole team. It's a teamwork in this. So we'll press. Thanks very much, Martha. Well, thank you again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John, and uh, 
I think we're going to find this tonight. There's a, an abundance of humility in some of these recipients. They, they certainly are giving credit all over the place. But John, I've got some good news for you. The city is going to be re uh, reviewing and changing the recreational master plan, John. And I know that you'll be interested in that, and especially that wonderful little item called the uh, Medicine Hat Cycling Master Plan, and I know you'll be involved in that. So you will continue to be a busy beaver, I'm sure, for our, all of us. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> Kathy Lenowski mentioned that today in a meeting I was at, and she said, oh, John would be a good member, yes. So the next is our humanitarian award, and I ask nominators Selena Simmons and Tammy Vanderloo to make their way to the stage, please. Selena and Tammy will introduce the recipient for tonight's 217 Humanitarian Award, Gerald Friedman. The criteria for our Humanitarian Award is an individual who has made a major contribution to public service through their commitment to high standards for the quality of life in Medicine Hat. Ladies. Thank you, Councillor Pearson and Mayor Clugston. Good evening, my name is Selena Simmons. And I'm Tammy Vanderloo. We are the co-executive directors of the Medicine Hat Food Bank. We'd like to start off by thanking the City of Medicine Hat for awarding the 2017 Humanitarian Award to our nominee and friend, Gerald Friedman. Gerald is truly deserving of this award. He is always the first one to step up when a community organization has a project that he's passionate about. If he believes in a cause, there is no doubt that it, it, he will not only make a donation himself, but spread the word and orchestrate any necessary funding for the project at hand to be successful. Gerald was born and raised in Medicine Hat. He graduated from Medicine Hat High School and attended Medicine Hat College. After a successful start to a 25-year career as an investment banker, advisor, sorry, Gerald became looking for ways to help our community. He's been giving his time, effort, and donations ever since. Gerald not only spreads the word about projects in need of funding, but he practices what he preaches. He would never ask someone to donate unless he's already stood up to give the cause a donation. Some of the many community organizations that Gerald has generously donated time, money, and effort to include the Medicine Hat Women's Shelter, the United Way, YMCA, the Medicine Hat District Food Bank, and also the Cancer Society. As well as community organizations in this city, Gerald also has given to the Medicine Hat Regional Hospital for furnishing two of their rooms, the Medicine Hat Police Department by helping start Crime Stoppers, and by promoting the police service in our community, and to the Medicine Hat Leisure Center by being one of the first people to make a generous donation and inspiring his friends and fellow donors to do the same. One of Gerald's most prominent qualities is his passion and capability to inspire others to help out and give. Another is to educate people on how they can give and what projects are most worth their while. Before donating to or advertising a cause, you'll always see Gerald go in and make sure that it's something he can get behind with his full heart and soul. Once you have Gerald on your side, he'll get your cause out to the community through his connections, and I promise you he won't stop until he sees it through. Gerald has always taken special interest in causes that involve education and young people. Um, his, he is a major supporter of the Medicine Hat Food Bank's Brown Bag Lunch Program, which provides between four to 700 children's healthy lunches every single day. He has also sponsored a room within the Medicine Hat College and has two children overseas for over 20 years through the Plan Canada. So a favorite memory of mine was one day I was sitting in the food bank and, and Gerald was visiting. He walked in and he looked around for a few minutes and then sl slipped out silently. No one knew where he had gone, but we all went about our day. A few minutes later, Gerald was back with a small pair of shoes in his hands. It turned out he had noticed the child in the food bank didn't have proper shoes on, so he ran to the store to get them a pair. Gerald gives quietly, thoughtfully, and with his whole heart. You can't find an effective organization in the city that hasn't been blessed by the generosity and dedication of Gerald and his wife Elaine. Thank you, Gerald, for all you've done for our community, for us, and congratulations on this very well-deserved award.
Thank you, Selena and Tammy. We know that Gerald will have a response. I didn't realize we only had one minute. I got seven pages. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome, everyone. First of all, thank you to Selena and Tammy for your kind introduction, and uh, also for nominating me for the City of Medicine Hat Humanitarian Award. Not only is this an honor for me to be receiving this award, but I am thrilled to be involved with so many wonderful charities and organizations in this community. Thanks to all the charities and organizations who perform amazing work with most of the time very limited resources. I believe because of this that it is important to create awareness and to educate people on how to become a volunteer and why they should. It is these volunteers who are the backbone to, this, to these charities. Organizations such as the Food Bank and the Women's Shelter, as well as many more, are integral parts of this community. Not only do they strive to help those struggling to meet their basic needs, but also to connect them to others in order to strengthen their entire system of support. This allows them a place to go when faced with difficulties, getting the resources they require, but also to eventually end their struggles altogether. Food banks, temporary homes, counseling services, cities and towns, and the like will not end poverty or homelessness, but the connections they create for those who struggle will. I believe this is the answer and that is why it is so important for those who can help these organizations this city has been blessed with by either volunteering or joining their boards. Thanks again to the Food Bank, co-executive directors Tammy and Selena for nominating me, and to the charities and programs that create avenues for people to end their struggling. You are the heart and soul of this city. Lastly, thank you to Councillor Pearson, Mayor Cluxton, and the City of Medicine Hat for presenting me with this prestigious award. Congratulations, Gerald. You, you've never been a person with few words, but those words were exceptionally well chosen, and thank you for that message. Finally tonight, our Community Service Award and nominator Bev Botter. I will ask Bev to come forward to introduce her nominee and tonight's recipient for the 2017 Community Service Award, Stan Sakamoto. Our Community Service Award is an award for those recipients who are deemed appropriate by City Council, including individuals that have made a major contribution in more than one category and who have contributed to community sustainability through leadership in social, economic, or urban development. Council is responsible for approving recipients within all categories and for choosing Community Service Award recipients. Bev? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor. It is my great pleasure this evening to introduce Stan Sakamoto, a gentleman most deserving of civic recognition. Stan was born and raised here in Medicine Hat, and in the many years that I've been acquainted with Stan, I've always known him as one who acts quietly, without a do, and he's always contributing to our community. Um, I have one recollection of one of the stories. Um, he had good parents. They, they had a market garden, and, and he learned the value of looking after uh, things to grow and things to look after. So uh, I do like the story where he was, um, said he grew up uh, shucking corn and 
and selling peas. But the, the, the thing that I remember is that his dad said, now Stan, when you, someone comes here to buy um, a dozen corn, you put an extra cob in there and you carry it to their car because that will, that will encourage goodwill and that will make people know that you have good values, which he did. And then uh, further to that, he was raised, he lived on uh, in Riverside, and he said there were lots of German families uh, beside this Japanese family. And he said, we gave them corn and they give us kuchen. <laughs> so his business practices are undeniably of the highest standard. Throughout his years and with his shooting star catering business, Stan has hired thousands of employees who not only needed employment, but they also remained ever loyal to him for their first break. I cite students and uh, single parents and mothers, for example, here. And I am aware of two fundraiser, two fundraising activities for ladies suffering with cancer for which Stan donated all the food, serving 300 people for one and 240 donors at these separate events for them. For the past five years, he has donated food at cost for the Canadian humanitarians, and it is not uncommon for Stan to personally deliver gifts of food for grieving families at their homes just unsolicited and uh, from his heart. Stan has been a Rotarian since 1984, having served as a director for this organization. He is a past trustee for the Medicine Hat Museum and Art Board. And furthermore, Stan contributed nine years as a board member for Ready Enterprises here in Medicine Hat. Ladies and gentlemen, please extend and welcome this well-known gentleman in our community, Mr. Stan Sakamoto. First of all, it's an honor to be on stage with these three other fine gentlemen, and uh, I've known them for since I was a kid, so it's great to be uh, here with them. And uh, thanks, uh, Councilman uh, Pearson and uh, Mary Clugston for being here. I, I want to dispel a, a rumor. One of my friends, uh, Gerald Friedman, is not running for mayor, so Ted, uh, <laughs> not, not to worry. <laughs> Um, first of all, I want to thank Beverly Botter uh, for your kind words and for your nomination, Beverly. Thank you kindly. I'd also like to thank Lyle Rebick and uh, Kevin McGimsey for letters of support. That was very kind of them. Um, thank you to the Award Selection Committee uh, for honoring me with this Community Service Award today. And uh, I've known um, a number of you for many years, and uh, Rod Sommerfeld was one of our great educators at Crescent Heights High School, and uh, uh, Rod taught us uh, math, and also he was a hockey coach for a, a short time, too. Thank you very much. Um, there are many people in our community deserving of this recognition, including uh, two of whom have recently passed away, uh, Ron Zablocki and uh, Jackie Penner. They're fondly remembered and uh, great citizens of Medicine Hat. Um, you know, every once in a while I carry this uh, stone with me, and it's a, it's a gratitude stone. And um, it reminds me of how grateful I am, I am um, uh, to have my wife Susan and for the seven children that we've raised together. Uh, one of them, Mark, uh, came here from Toronto, who I'm very proud of. And uh, we are both rewarded uh, to have nine grandchildren, and a tenth is on the way. The other night I was driving um, along McCutcheon Drive and, and uh, stopped and looked out at this beautiful city that we live in and I remembered growing up in Riverside, uh, attending elementary school there. And then I looked down at the old scout hall that uh, I attended and I've been influenced by wonderful parents and by the Boy Scout slogan, uh, do a good turn every day. 
Also, the four-way test of the Rotary Club is also important to me. And they are, one, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? I'm also very grateful to have watched uh, my father, Eugene Eaton, who gave back to the community. I'm grateful through our business shooting star events that Susan and I own, and we have been able to give back to the community that has supported us over the years. And finally, I'm grateful to call Medicine Hat home. Whenever Susan and I have been away, I'm so happy to experience the joyous feeling of coming back to the hat. Back to the spaciousness, the big sky, the clean air, and a feeling of belonging to this great community. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. This award to Stan was especially meaningful for me, and I have to tell you why. Bev, I was one of those recipients of the food trays. Two weeks after my wife's passing, I was thinking, which can of soup should I open, or <laughs> which TV dinner? There was a knock on the door, and there was Stan with trays of food that kept me from starvation for at least two weeks. So I appreciate it. And the other important thing to recognize is that uh, as one of the founders of the Folk Music Club, we were puzzled about finances. And at one point in the early stages, we asked Stan if he would help guide us in doing a budget for our first concert. Stan opened his books. How often does that happen? And showed us exactly what we needed to make this concert and eventually the club a success. You have a very special place in, in my heart and I know in the hearts of our community. Thank you, Stan. Every community has residents that give unselfishly of themselves to better their neighborhood, community, and fellow residents. City Council is pleased to be able to provide the opportunity for the community to recognize these outstanding recipients. Through your dedication, we see how everyone is able to make a difference in our community. You are community builders, each and every one of you. May your contributions continue for many years. Our city is so much better for you leading the way. Thank you to everyone for attending this evening in celebration of tonight's award recipients and on behalf of all the volunteers and organizations that make Medicine Hat a community of choice. Thank you. Thank you.